Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. In today's video, I have 10 really useful iOS 14 tips and tricks I wanna show you. Uh, some of these you might not even know existed, so tell me in the comments below if you learn anything new in this video. The first one, if I swipe over to my second home screen, you can see here it doesn't really look like anything special except these apps at the top, they have kind of a dimmed out label underneath. You can see health and app store, they're kind of grayed out, they're not completely white text like all of these applications. And that's because these apps are always changing thanks to the Siri suggestions widget. So if I just go into jiggle mode, so you can see here, this is a widget. This is Siri suggested apps. And uh, this is always changing throughout the day. And something I really like is the iPhone will detect if any apps that are about to be suggested up here are already on the home screen, it's not going to put it up there because it's smart and it knows that you already have that app icon there. So it's only gonna recommend applications that aren't already on your home screen. So this is a really useful one if you just go in to your add widgets button at the top left there. And then you scroll all the way down to Siri suggestions. It is the first one here, the app suggestions widget. So number two is a really fundamental feature of iOS 14. And uh, it's something that you think you would be able to do, but I don't think many people actually know how to do this. So if you wanna browse your apps in the app library and you're like, hey, I want one of these apps out on my main home screen. Somebody, the layman might not know how to do this. You can actually just grab any one of these applications as long as they're on the top layer of these folders. You can grab an app like FaceTime and then you can just bring it right out to your home screen and drag it there like that. So most people don't know that these applications inside the app library are drag and droppable. The next tip has to do with these little app badges that you can get if you have a notification. So the app library operates in uh, kind of a different way than your home screen, and by default, it will not show any uh, app notification icons in the app library, and you can actually change that. So if we jump into settings, and then go home screen, you can see notification badges show in app library. And I did this on purpose, I gave myself a notification on mail, and you can see there, and now if I go into the app library, you can see mail now has a little notification icon. I think I'm gonna leave this off just because I like the clean look of the app library without any you know, notification icons, but you can turn that on if you want to. So this next one is probably my favorite feature on this entire list. It just makes using your iPhone so much faster. So if you wanna open an application, you can do that from Spotlight without removing your fingers from the keyboard. So if you wanna open Health, just start typing the name of the app. You can see there it says Open. All you have to do is hit Go, and it'll open the app just like that. This works with any application on your iPhone. So this goes really well with the app library because let's say now you have iOS 14, you have all these widgets, and then you don't want all of your apps to be showing on your home screen. You have uh, all your apps hidden in the app library. So let's say you want to find calculator because it's kind of a hard app to find. Just swipe down, type calculator. You don't even have to type the entire thing. Then tap go and then you're in the calculator. This is an insanely useful feature. Okay, this next one is an awesome feature and in my opinion, it's a fundamental feature if you have a smartphone. I don't know why it took Apple this long to add it to the iPhone specifically, but picture in picture video now works on iOS 14. I'm gonna open Safari here. If you have YouTube Premium, this will work with YouTube, but it also works with FaceTime and other applications that use uh, the default Apple web player right here. So if you're in an interface that looks like this, if you have this type of player and you're on the web, all you have to do is swipe up to go home and then the video will keep playing on your home screen. You can resize it if you want like that or swipe it off to the side if you wanna minimize it. All these features work exactly the same for FaceTime calls as well. If you have a lot of messages on your phone, unlike me, uh, you can actually pin messages at the top of your screen simply by swiping all the way from the left to the right, and then that person will be pinned at the top of your message list. This is really useful, like I said, if you have a bunch of messages. Here on this demo phone, I don't have that many, but if you have 20 or 30 conversations going on, it's nice to be able to pin up to nine conversations at the top of the screen. And you also do get some extended features inside this. So if the user that you have pinned at the top is typing a message to you, you'll actually see that typing indicator uh, without actually going into the message. You can actually see that they're typing uh, right here on the little image. Over the years, Apple has been making a whole bunch of improvements to Maps now. Although I still prefer Google Maps as my main Maps application, Apple Maps is becoming more and more powerful. And I think they definitely have the better privacy policy compared to Google, where they uh, literally want to track everything about you. So Apple Maps now in iOS 14 uh, supports two things that I think are going to be really useful for people. So one is speed cameras. So for those of you who have a lead foot like I do, uh, if you're using your driving directions inside Apple Maps, uh, it'll now alert 
alert you for red light cameras and speed cameras and also congestion zones. So the Apple Maps app can now tell you, uh, I remember I was traveling in Paris, I think, and I learned something there that I didn't know. So if you have a certain license plate, you actually can't drive on the roads there. And you can input your license plate now into Apple Maps, and it'll tell you what area of the city you are allowed to drive in if your license plate in the country you live in does have that restriction. So that is pretty cool. And on top of the two features I just listed, I'm gonna have this uh, article linked below. Maps in iOS 14 is so powerful. They have cycling directions, they have a new feature called the guides. There's honestly so much in Maps and this honestly might be the biggest update we've seen to Apple Maps in a long time. So I'll have this uh, Macworld article linked down below. So for those of you who own a pair of AirPods, on iOS 14, your iPhone can now alert you if your battery is getting low. So my AirPods right now, I think, are fully charged. But if your AirPods get below 10%, you'll get a little notification on your iPhone saying that your battery is low. And it also works for the Apple Watch if you intend on using sleep tracking. So uh, if your Apple Watch battery, I believe, gets below 30%, it'll tell you to plug in your Apple Watch uh, before you use it for sleep. So it looks like Apple is being a little bit more proactive about telling you the battery status of your accessories. Every year I always appreciate the enhancements Apple makes to privacy and this year once again they have made a whole bunch of big steps. So we now have these new indicator dots at the top of our screen that will show up whenever an application has used either the camera or the microphone. So if I open camera you can see there is now a green dot on the right side of the notch. Now green means camera and orange means microphone. So if I now leave out of the camera app and I go into control center, you can see it says camera recently was able to be accessed and it will show that for about 30 seconds and then it will go away. So this is really cool. It's really awesome to be knowing if an application, uh, most specifically probably a third party application is using your camera or microphone when you don't want it to. So this last one, I think, really ties together the entire widget experience with iOS 14. So Apple gives you the option to have a pre-made, what they call a smart stack, where they'll take about seven or eight widgets and they'll have them stacked on top of each other. But what if you don't want that custom created stack? What if you wanna make your own? You can actually do that. You can see here at the top left, I have the calendar widget. If I swipe up, I have the reminders, then swipe up again, I'm back to calendar. So I only have a two stack widget here, and I find this really useful. So all you have to do to add a widget on top of another one is go into jiggle mode, grab the widget, drag it on top of the other one, and then you can swipe through these widgets as you want. If you press and hold on it, you can tap edit stack. And if you want, you can have smart, ro smart rotate turned on or off. So this will rotate between these widgets based on the time of day, location, etc. So that was a whole bunch of fun. I love going through all of these iOS features with you guys. If you guys wanna see another one of these videos, tell me in the comments down below. And also drop a like on this video if you appreciated it. Uh, my name is Michael, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.